So if you did watch this video, I apologize. For some reason, it did not record the first 20 minutes. You'll have to uh, learn from somebody else. I know. Well, uh, my fan. My fan. Huh? I don't think so, but we'll look later. Okay, so this is the only part that I think will be challenging because it was the most challenging part before when we did this. And you know what? I changed I changed these, but it for some reason I didn't change it on this. Oh yeah, I changed it on my original. Hold on, let me find the original. I changed these because I wanted to give you a little bit more challenging one. Um Where is it? Here. So I changed these back so that you could see harder ones in class from me. There are harder ones in your homework. So I made them a little bit more challenging for us during that. So um, the first one, if you could scribble out the f of x they gave you, and instead use f of x equals q over 2x. That now we have done these before, we just haven't done it with cube roots and square roots, that's the only difference, but we have done all of this before. Let the graph of G be a horizontal shrink by factor of one six, followed by a translation three units to the left of the graph of f of x. We have to write the rule. So who remembers what I always used to say when it said followed by what it meant for us to do? Simplify. Thank you. Nobody in my other class remember that. Or they didn't finish. So when you say when you see followed by, that's the step that we have to simplify at. Or usually people make mistakes at that point. So we're going to start by doing the first part, then we're going to simplify, and then do the last part. So we're going to have like an in between, and an in between equation. We'll just call that one h of x. Our in between. We'll just call this part h of x. And then we'll finish with g of x when we're done. So we're going to have h of x just be a horizontal shrink by factor of 1, 6. So h of x means I'm going to take my f of x, and it's going to be a horizontal shrink by factor of 1, 6. What am I actually going to put in the function if I'm doing a horizontal shrink of 1, 6? What am I going to put in my function? 6. So I'm going to put in 6 multiplied by the x. Remember this notation means wherever I see an x, wherever I see an x in the previous function right here, I'm going to replace that with parentheses around it and put in 6x. So that 2, you'll see, is not part of the parentheses. So I do have to use cube root 2 parentheses, and then inside that parentheses, I'm going to put 6x. So you have cube root 12x, there's my simplified step. So one more time, when you plug something in for x, you put parentheses around x, you replace x, you don't replace anything else. But you need those parentheses or you're going to make mistakes. Most of you make mistakes. You don't put them. So now we're going to put g of x. And so after followed by, we're not going to do a translation three units to the left. So translation to the left is horizontal. That means I'm going to take my h function and I'm going to do something to the x inside. Three units to the left is going to be x plus three. So wherever I see an x in the previous function, right here, wherever I see an x, that gets parentheses around it. Wherever I see that x, I replace it with x plus 3. So I have cube root 12, parenthesis, x plus 3, plus parenthesis. I'm just going to simplify that. g of x is equal to the cube root of 12x plus 36. How did I get 36? I distributed it. Mm -hmm. Yep, multiplied. 
I know you all can do everything there. Where you have to pay attention is where those parentheses go before you plug that in, because that's where people make silly mistakes. So we're going to do another one. And I changed the next one also. <coughs> I guess it's on my next page. So I changed the function to be square root x plus 3. Go ahead and change your function for the next one, square root x plus 3. So we can make it a little bit more challenging. Give you more practice before you do your assignment. This says, um, let the graph of g be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3, followed by, simplify, a translation of 6 units to the right of the graph. So the first thing we have to do is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. So I'm going to have h of x. That's going to equal our f function. But what am I going to do inside since it's horizontal? Horizontal stretch factor of 3, what should I do inside? Reciprocate it, so what am I going to write? One third x. So whatever is inside of the parentheses, I'm going to make a parenthesis around just x. And wherever that parenthesis is, that's where I'm going to plug in one third x. So I will have square root parenthesis around just x, one third x, plus three still on the outside. Did you follow? Now what's my next step? Simplify. simplify. And what can I simplify here? Does anybody know what I can simplify? Does anybody not know what I can simplify? <laughs> There's nothing being done to the parentheses. There's like nothing to simplify. I can just drop the parentheses here. Sometimes I might have to distribute or multiply numbers together or something, but there's nothing to do for that one. So there's our h of x. That's our in-between function. Now we're going to do g of x. It says that g of x, the second part is 6 units to the right. Translation, 6 units to the right. So that is horizontal. That's going to go inside of the parentheses. 6 units to the right. What am I going to write inside there? x minus 6. So in my previous equation, wherever I see an x, I put a parenthesis around it. Can you see where I'm putting that parenthesis? That's, that's where I put my parenthesis x minus 6. So I have square root, 1 third, parenthesis, x minus 6, close parenthesis, plus 3. So the same thing right here, it's just x is now x minus 6. We're going to simplify that. What should I do to simplify? This should be the 1 third. So we get 1 third x minus 2 plus 3. And anything else I can simplify? Yes, Ms. Criswell? Okay, what is it? Minus 2 plus 3? Well, that's plus 1. Thanks, guys. Welcome. You follow me? One more. Let the graph of G be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, followed by simplify. a translation 3 units up of the graph. Oh, and I didn't change this one, of uh, cube root of x. So we'll just leave it as is. So we'll do our h of x first. That's gonna, we're going to do something to that, and it is a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Where does a vertical stretch go? Inside or outside? Outside. So we do 2 times the f of x function. And then we say, what is the f of x function? 2 times cube root of x. And then we simplify. Two cube root x. There's my h of x. Okay. 
Now we'll do our G of X. And it says for the last part, uh, translation three units up of the graph of F of X. So we're going to take our previous function, and what are we going to do to translate it up? We're going to put plus three on the outside of that function. So this is H of X. I'm going to take H of X to cube root X. And then put plus three on the outside of the function. And there's nothing really to simplify from there, so just that's it. So I think that will probably be the hardest part of this assignment. Just that. And there's only four or three. Three or four. I can't remember. Questions like that. Last section is a graphing calculator section. We read that baby. There is a little bit of work to do, but it's not hard though. I gotta go find mine. Okay, the last section I'm gonna show you how to graph uh, parabolas and circles on the calculator. Parabolas that we've graphed before, you should already be able to graph on the calculator. <coughs> These are parabolas we have not graphed before. These are parabolas that should open the left or right. We didn't graph any of those before. Okay? So, and that would be something that you do in pre calc or trade, like by hand. Oh. In here, we're, we're just doing it on the calculator. Here's the equation for the first one, and I'm just going to rewrite it so I can like work with it, but. That's where it is. The first equation is 1 half y squared equals x. And I say, graph that on your calculator. And you go to your y equals. And you say, hold on. It says y equals. How are we going to type that in if that doesn't say y equals? It's a make it say y equals. Yeah, you got to solve it for y. So that's what we have to do. There's, there's our work. We have to solve for a lot. So look at both sides of the equation. We need to get y by itself. What should I do first to both sides of the equation to start getting y by itself? What should we do? Divide by what? I can't divide by a fraction. Multiply by is reciprocal? Okay. Okay, now we have y squared equals 2x. Square root, excellent. I feel like Mrs. Criswell has said to me a hundred times, if I square root, I need plus or minus. If I square root, I need plus minus. So now we have y equals plus minus square root 2x. So we can go to type this into our graphing calculator. And you will ask me the next question. What's your question you're going to ask me? How do you do plus or minus? You can't. Oh. <laughs> you have to put two equations in. So your y1, you will make square root 2x. That's our plus. Your y2, you will make negative sign, not minus, negative sign square root 2x. So you'll have your plus and your minus in your y1 and your y2. So you just have to do them separately, and I'll do them now so you can see me doing it. Well, you can't tell? <laughs> Sorry about that. What happens if you go to graph it and it doesn't look the way you want it? It's going to look like your window's all messed up. Do you remember the What's the easiest, fastest? Boom, boom, done. Zoom, 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 zoom. Now, I know if anybody's having trouble or they have an error, they're going to call me over me 
immediately because I can't see if you have an error. <laughs> but I have mine up there graph, so you can see if yours looks right. Okay. I don't know. It sounds like maybe something's wrong. Other people is more than welcome to sit here and do your work. We just plugged in. Okay, now the question it asks you is where is the vertex and which way does it open? Do you remember the vertex of the parabola? Like that center point. So where's the vertex? This one does zero, zero. And which way does it open? Maybe 
could figure out why it looks like that. It's not wrong. We need to figure out why it looks like that. Here's mine. Anybody having trouble getting it before I go on?